Today we're using a bunch of techniques in the Fusion page to make this dynamic light streak title. This is gonna be so much fun and you're gonna learn a ton. Let's go. All right, let's get started. I'm here in DaVinci Resolve in the Fusion page and I just have a new Fusion composition open and I have a background node just connected to my media out. One thing I'll do is go up to the workspace menu and uncheck show page navigation just to give us a little bit of room here. And let's just start with some text. I'll grab a text plus node and drag this down and take the output of the text plus node and drag it over the output of the background node like this. And now if I put some text in and drag my media out into my right viewer, I can size this. Let's just pick a different font, maybe change the tracking a little bit, something like that for now. So we'll work on this text here in just a minute, but let's get the background going. I want kind of a swoopy light streak thing that kind of goes in sort of like a little figure eight. And we're going to make that using a mask on a background. So let's take this black background over here. Let's make a new background. Just take a background node and drag this in here. And I'll take the output of it and drag it over the output of our background to merge it over. And let's hit F2 and say color underscore BG. And let's make this any color we want. Let's just make this kind of a cyan, something like that. And now we're gonna limit this with a mask. This third little icon here that looks like a little pen path is a polygon mask. Take this and drag it near my color background. Take the output here and put that into the mask input of the color background. That's the blue input there. This is gonna limit that color background to whatever shape I draw for the mask. So if I close this shape, it's going to just draw that color inside of the mask. But I'm gonna reset this this and I'm just gonna draw kind of like a little wobbly figure eight here, something like that. And I can go ahead and close this. It's gonna make two little weird circles here. Not gonna be a big problem because in my inspector, I'll uncheck solid and I can push up border width like that. And now we're gonna have just a stroke. And the real trick here is if I take this length slider down to be really small, I can adjust the position here and I can animate this little stroke along the path, which is gonna be pretty much what we build this effect out of. Let's soften this a little bit, make the border width a little bigger. And now we can just animate this position to have this kind of swirl around. So to animate this, we're gonna to go to a frame here in our composition. Let's just go to frame zero, the very first frame. And I'm gonna go here to position and click this little icon here. This will add a keyframe for our position at frame zero. And it's gonna be 0.37 at frame zero. Now I can move to a different time. Let's just move this to 24 frames or so. So about one second later. And let's move this position all the way to one, okay? And actually, um, actually, we should go back to frame zero here. And I don't want this at 0.37, I want this at zero. So we'll just move that up. So it starts at zero and then it animates all the way to frame 24 going all the way to one, which kind of goes around in a loop. And what's neat is I can go to something like the spline panel. I'll open up a graph of my animation as long as I as long as I check this position box. I'm not going to check the polygon box, just the position. And here we have a graph of this animation. It starts at zero and it goes to one over 24 frames. But check this out. If I box select both of these keyframes and then right click on one of them, I can go to set loop and select loop. And look what happens when I do that. If I zoom out here, we can see that it's automatically looping this into eternity, which means that I only have to animate from zero to 24 frames and it's going to repeat itself like this. Oh, so cool. Now we have this thing swooping around constantly. And I mean, it's all right. It doesn't look that great yet. Let's do some trickiness to make this look more like a light. Anytime that you have something that emits light, especially with motion graphics, you kind of have a core, like for instance, a lightsaber is white in the middle and then it kind of glows a certain color. So actually lightsabers are all white and they kind of just glow whatever color they are. And so that's kind of the idea that we want is this sort of light emission idea. We're gonna have this start white and then kind of fade out to this cyan color. And an easy way to do that would be just to copy this polygon by hitting control C, double click off and hit control shift V. That's gonna make an instance of this polygon and it has this little green line and an instance is like a linked copy. And so it's a copy that we can use for other things in the nodes, but all of the properties are linked. The only thing that we're not going to link is the soft edge and the border width. So I'm gonna right click on soft edge and select D instance. Same thing with border width, right click and D instance so that we have individual control of this second mask. Now we're gonna take another background. Let's make this a white background and I'll rename it as such white BG, and we'll merge this over. And we'll take this instance and plug that into the white background. And now we have the white inside of the blue, and it's sort of doing what we want. 
But let's select this instance here and we're gonna take the border width down a little bit and we're gonna take the soft edge down a little bit. And now look what's happening. Oh baby, that's looking so much better. So now we have this kind of swooping around and it looks like it's actually really bright and it's just kind of glowing. Now let's take all of this so far and we're gonna add some distortion to it just so it doesn't look like this perfect little oblong circle thing. And I'm gonna do that by hitting shift space bar and typing DSP for displace. That's gonna bring up our displace tool and that's gonna do nothing by default fault until we add a texture to drive our displacement. So we're gonna grab this second icon, this fast noise, and grab that and put that in here like this into the green input. The fast noise is gonna make this cloud texture. And we can select that and adjust the scale and adjust a bunch of stuff with this. But by connecting this fast noise, something that's black and white, to our displacement node, the places that are white are going to displace more and the places that are dark are going to displace less. And so as we push up the refraction strength on our displacement node, take the offset down, look at this it kind of changes this around oh baby it looks so cool and just push this around just a little bit and it looks a lot more interesting look at that oh so much better it looks like a you know it looks like some kind of piece of plasma or something something that's a little bit more wild than our just kind of boring light this is such a cool trick just putting that displacement on things it really helps things look a lot more natural and a lot more interesting so now we have that moving around and because these are instants i could take this path and i can move it around put it wherever i want and it's going to update both with the cyan background as well as the white background. We can kind of move this around, I'll actually get rid of a couple of these points just to make things a little smoother. There we go. And now we have this kind of going behind our title a little more. One thing to pay attention to, and I just kind of messed this up, is that masks animate automatically. And so I actually set a keyframe for this mask way over here. And if you don't want that, then I can just go to the keyframe that I don't want and then just hit this keyframe right here. So we only have the keyframes that we like. Perfect. Now that still moves around like that. That looks cool. And we can adjust the length and everything of this light streak just by pushing the length up a little bit and have that be a lot more wild if we want to. Oh, looks so cool. All right. Now this is neat. Let's take this to the next level. What's really going to sell this light emission kind of idea that we're doing is if it affects something like a background or a texture or something. So let's go ahead and add that. I'm going to go to my media pool, right click, import media, and I'm going to find a texture. This is just a bricks texture. It's always nice to have some kind of grunge and wall textures and stuff laying around if you're gonna be doing motion graphics. We'll just take this and merge this over our background like this. Ooh, but here's the thing, we have a problem. <laughs> That same distortion is being applied to our background. And so what do we do instead of this? Let's do this. I'm gonna hold shift and bring this out and let's take this background, this black background here, and let's just turn down the alpha. So this is just gonna have our light on, not a black background, but a clear background. And then we're just gonna start brand new with a new background here, merge our bricks over our background. And then we're gonna take everything that we have so far, this light movement and everything, and merge that over our background like that so that we have the displacement just affecting the light and the clear background. And look, now we don't have the displacement messing with our wall. Okay, take this and plug it into our text like this, bring in our media out and everything's okay again. So let's take this merge and maybe take the alpha gain down and take this blend down. And I'm just kind of blending this on top of my black background. I could also put it on a colored background, but I want this to be really dark where you almost don't even see the text of the wall, okay? Then we're gonna do something really tricky. We're gonna take this same brick texture and we're gonna merge it over itself again. So we basically are just putting another copy on top of it, but we're gonna run it through a color corrector like this first. So now we're merging a color corrected version on top of itself. And this time I think what we'll do is just push up the gain a little bit, take down the gamma. And now we have this really nice contrasty kind of more wet looking wall. And this is going to be what our wall looks like when it's lit up. I'll also maybe just push this a little bit cyan just to kind of match with this color. Now there are a lot of nodes in Fusion. And if you're somewhat new to Fusion, this is probably pretty overwhelming. If so, make sure to check out my nine nodes that you need to make almost anything in Fusion workshop. That's a great place to start if you're not familiar with how Fusion works or not familiar with all of the nodes. There's really only a few nodes that you need to make most things, just to make almost anything you wanna make. A lot of them we're using in this video, but I go over them a lot in that workshop. Make sure to check that out right here. Let's get back to it. But we're only gonna see this wall around where our light is. And we're just gonna kind of fake some lighting here. And we're 
we're going to do that by taking this isolated light that we made earlier and we're going to blur it. So I'll take a blur like this, bring this into a blur. I'll bring the blur up here on the left so we can see what's going on. Push up the blur size and just blur this a lot like that. So now it's a really blurry version of what we have. And we're going to use this as a mask for this color corrected wall texture. So that wall texture is only going to exist right here inside of this blurry spot. And we'll watch what happens. We'll take this and just plug this into the mask input of merge six, which is controlling our wall. And look what happens. Oh, this is beautiful at this. Now it's like it's lighting up that wall and we can push this blur up more or less to add a little bit of light spread there. We'll just push this up a little bit more. We'll take this merge and maybe take alpha gain down. And that's just going to blend those together a little bit nicer. And now it looks like this is kind of lighting up the wall a little more. Let's spread this out just a touch more. And I'm going to take this color corrector and I'm going to take the gain up more like this. Oh yeah. Now that looks brighter. Oh, that looks so cool. I mean, it's just so easy. All this is, is a color corrected version of our background and we're just limiting it to only up here where this very blurry version of our light is and it looks like the light is lighting that background Ugh. without any kind of 3d lighting or anything like that plays back super fast super easy that looks amazing look at that that's so cool all right so we got that going on let's also add a little bit of randomness to this actually after this displacement or maybe even before the displacement let's add a transform node we can use this transform node I'll just hold shift and put this in here like this and we can rotate this like this, and that's going to add a little bit more randomness to our light. So we can keyframe this angle like this, start at zero and end at 360, 365, whatever we want to do. And now it's doing the same thing over and over again, but it's rotating. And so it looks like it's different every time. So we get a little bit more randomness for our money. <sighs> looks so cool. So cool. Okay. Let's pump this displacement up a little bit more. Make that a little stronger. That looks neat. Oh, so cool. All right. So the background looks dope. Let's make the text a little bit cooler. There are so many different ways to do this. One thing you might not know, in a text plus, there's this fourth icon called shading. And by default, there's just a white solid fill, but there's different elements. And these are like different layers of our text. And so if we go to the second element and enable it, that's gonna put a red stroke around our text. And so we can have a separate stroke from our fill. So let's go ahead and just break this out into two pieces, sort of like we did with our light. So I'm gonna take this text and let's just copy that control C double click off control shift V and that's going to make instance I'll take the output of that and put that here and let's call this one fill and we'll call this one stroke so I'm just going to go over to shading and right click on enabled and de-instance that and then in our second element de-instance that okay so in fill we're going to disable the fill and in stroke we're going to disable that outline and then in stroke we're just going to disable the fill like this and so this should look pretty much the same but we have these separated so let's take our stroke and here where it says red outline, let's turn this to white. And then for the fill, we can either go in our first element here or we can go in our text controls here. Let's make that kind of like a blue too, just to kind of preview stuff. And now each of these things we can use as a mask for any other kind of textures we want. So I think what might be fun, let's just take these and drag them down below our merge. And we're going to use these as masks. So I'll take the stroke and bring that into the mask for the merge, the fill, the mask and the merge like this. And then we can add whatever kind of texture we want for the fill and the stroke. That's just an easy way to do that. So maybe for our fill, let's take a background and plug that in. That's just going to make like black text, but we can switch this to something like our four color or even a gradient. And we can change this gradient to be something kind of cool. Change that around like this. I can change my gradient controls like that. And I could even do something like grab a fast noise and use that for my stroke. Could push up the detail a little bit, change the scale. And that's going to make our stroke not solid but kind of cloudy if I push up the contrast even more it's going to really do some cool stuff and now I can take this and push the seethe rate up and it's going to animate these clouds and it'll also kind of change our stroke a little bit let's push the scale up a little more and now we have sort of these pulsating colors let's take this stroke here and scroll down to where it says softness and we could push up the softness just a little bit and we'll have this sort of pulsating glow around our letters. Yeah, that's looking cool. Let's maybe push up the thickness a little bit. Maybe take the softness down a little. Cool. And again, we can do anything we want for our texture. And so I could take this background and do something like a mosaic blur. Let's just change this to triangles. And now we have this cool texture there for our title. Pretty cool. Maybe we want to change this to something maybe more kind of like warm. There we go. That looks cool. I think this light is going a little bit quick. So we could take this animation of this polygon. I'll just open up our key 
keyframes panel here. Go to these three dots and say show only selected tools and twirl this down and we'll just take this, push it out a little more just so it isn't so fast. So now that kind of moves around. Very cool. That's looking good. Let's add a little bit more movement to this. We'll just add a little bit of shake using a camera shake. And I like the camera shake effect, which is just called hammer shake, not C shake like that. It gives you a little bit more control over things, but it's only in the paid version of Resolve. If you don't have the paid version of Resolve, you can use the other camera shake. It's just a little different controls. Let's push up this randomness and stuff. Here we go. And we have this kind of moving around. It looks pretty cool. This background, I think it'd be nice to have that changing a little bit too. So maybe we could even do this same thing and just grab a transform. We can rotate this within the letters like this. And again, we'll just kind of animate this to a keyframe here at frame zero and then kind of move this back and forth. And now we have this changing a little bit. That looks cool. Okay. Now after this whole thing, let's add just a little bit of glow. Put this glow on and let's change the glow around, push the blend up a little bit. We can kind of dial this into where we want. And actually, I don't know if I'm quite liking that. I think what I might do instead is grab a blur and you can bring this whole thing into a blur and then merge the blur over the non-blurred footage like this and set this alpha gain to zero on the merge. That's going to just add everything together. You can blur this out. I like to uncheck log X and Y and I can push the X out a lot and you get kind of these streaks. We could do something like brightness and contrast before this blur and we get a lot of control over this blur. Let's go ahead and clip the black and white and then we'll push the black up like that. And then that's gonna limit it to just the brightest parts of our composition. I think that orange and red might just be a little too much. I think it's a little crazy. Take this background and let's maybe go a different direction with this. And I like the blur on the background but I don't really like it on this text. So I can actually just take this whole thing, hold shift and drag this down to the left of the text and we'll plug this in earlier like that. So we just have this going on there. So now we have this sort of anamorphic blur happening. Very neat. Let's add a little more contrast to our letters here. That's the nice thing is once you have this built, you can mess with all kinds of stuff. Let's actually transform this before the mosaic blur too, so that it kind of sparkles a little more. So the triangles don't actually rotate, the colors just change. And that looks kind of nice. I like that. And then maybe just as a final touch, we'll put another transform here and we'll just kind of zoom this in, take the size and just keyframe that. And we'll just push this in a little bit. Here we go. That looks really really cool. And now we can change this text whenever we want. Just call this light. I don't know if I'm into the green so much. I think I kind of just like it white. Maybe white with like a with kind of a blue outline, purpley outline. That's kind of neat. I like that a little better, I think. We can even add a texture to our text just by grabbing another piece of grunge. Let's just go with this. Just merge this over our background here. We have this texture going on. And look at that. It's going through that mosaic blur. Can probably take the mosaic blur off or even turn it down a little bit. It's kind of cool. But we could turn that off. Turn that transform off. And that's the thing is you can always play with things. You can always adjust the brightness and contrast of this, make it a little brighter and just have a little bit of imperfections there. That looks nice. That's kind of cool. I like that. So now we have this really cool title with the light streaks, lots of texture, lots of movement. Pretty cool thing to do in Fusion. The thing I like about doing it this way is we have a whole map of everything that we've done here. And so it's easy to see what is going into making our light. I can hit shift space bar and type UND for underlay and put a little under lay here, call this light. Maybe we'll even change the color to something like teal. This part's our text texture. This part's our background. I can double click off of this, hold down alt to select that underlay and hit F2 to rename it. And we'll call this BG. This will be the BG lighting. And we can rename all these little pieces and we can always go back and change stuff. It's all modular and nothing's really hidden. Everything's all just on this map. This is like the glow. And so let's break this down. Starting on the left, we have our background and we have this brick texture and we're putting that over the background and just turning it down quite a bit. Then we're taking a color corrected version of that and just putting it over with a blurred version of the light that just kind of moves that around and sort of fakes a interactive lighting. So that all comes from a clear background with a polygon mask that's masking our main color. And then we also have a instance polygon mask that is masking white, but not as blurry. And those are being put together. And that looks like a little kind of glowing lightsaber thing, but it looks too perfect. So we're transforming it, rotating it around like this. And then we're putting it through a displacement node, which is driven by this fast noise. Wherever it's white, it displaces it more. Wherever it's black, it displaces it less. And so now we get this kind of organic looking form. It really makes that look interesting. We're taking all of that and blurring it and using that as a mask for our color corrected kind of fake light here. Putting that all together, putting our little light streak on top of that fake light on the background and it looks like there's a real light and it's lighting up those bricks. Ah, oh, so cool. We're taking all of this so far and we're adding a little bit of 
of horizontal glow that we've made just with brightness and contrast and blurring that and then putting that over everything with an add transparency mode which the way that you do that is just by taking the alpha gain down and leaving out apply mode on normal then we're putting our text over that's split up into two pieces the stroke and the fill then we're doing some camera shake and some transform and that's our finished product Ooh, super cool <laughs> i love stuff like this it's just like pure creativity man adding texture and light to things oh so much fun hey if you're new here my name is casey and i want to teach you fusion if you've been editing in resolve and you haven't really jumped into the fusion page this is such a great place for you to be i have tons of videos on fusion make sure to check those out and don't miss my nine nodes workshop that goes over the nine nodes that you need to make almost anything in fusion simplifies a lot of stuff here's the link also here's a fusion crash course if you need that that'd just be super hey thanks for being here appreciate you being here a lot <laughs> king of the outros <laughs>